We've already seen how to convert from polar form to rectangular form. Now let's see how we go in the other direction. And it's really not much different. The only difference is we're going to use these identities kind of in the reverse. So r cosine of theta, recall, equals x. r sine theta equals y. And x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to get, you know, every time we see an x in a rectangular form, we're going to replace it with r cosine theta. And wherever we see a y, we're going to replace it with r sine theta. And if we see x squareds and y squareds added, we're going to replace them with r squareds. Uh, the only catch is we're going to solve for r at the end. We're going to solve for r. And what I mean by that is once we get our equation done, um, we want our equations all to look like r equals something, you know, because the only, I mean, you don't have to, but in order to graph it in the calculator, that's sort of the standard, standard way to graph polar functions. So let's do this first one here. We're converting this, re this equation, which is in rectangular form, to polar form. Now I can see this clearly as a circle whose center is 3, 2, and whose radius is the square root of 13. So let's see what that would look like in polar form. So uh, I clearly need to expand these terms out because that's the only way I'm going to get uh, an x squared plus a y squared. Now you can replace that x with a r an r cosine theta and that y with an r uh, sine theta, but I'm not going to do that just yet because then, cause then I'd have to square out all those terms with cosines and sines and it's just a little bit frustrating. So uh, I'm going to multiply x minus 3 squared. So I trust you could all do that. That's going to be x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. Okay, that's this, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9. And y minus 2 squared would be y squared minus 2y minus 2y plus 4, which reduces to y squared minus 4y plus 4. And of course, that all equals 13. And so now is when I group my x squareds plus y squareds together. So x squared plus y squared. And what do I have left? I'm going to put my minus 6x next to it. I can do that. And I'll put my minus 4y. Oops. And then I got my 9 and my Four, uh, 4 there, plus 9 plus 4 equals 13. And that's this is where the identities come in, because now I've got my x squared plus y squared, which I know is r squared. So I can just write this as r squared minus 6, and wherever I see an x, I'm going to now just put in a r cosine theta. Stick the black. minus 4 times y is r sine theta. And now notice I have a 9 plus a 4 which is a 13 and then I have an equals 13 on the other side so they just if I subtract 13 from both sides I just get a 0. Right. If I subtract, you know, because this is nine plus four, 13, uh, four, which is thirteen, minus thirteen from both sides, and I get a zero. Now I'm actually I'm almost done. Um, what I really need to do now is just um, is just to solve for r, and I do that by, well, I can. Um, I can first try to solve for this r squared here. I want to do that first. So r squared equals, 
So I'm going to add 6R cosine to both sides, and I'm going to add 4R sine theta to both sides. So hopefully you can see. that you get this. Okay, hopefully that's pretty clear, right? I didn't write it if you want me to if you want me to draw that down. Right? Plus six R cosine to both sides. And plus four R sine theta to both sides. And now I'm almost done, except we, we normally don't leave it with an r squared. We leave it uh, in terms of r. So to get rid of this r squared, you can square root, but you could also just divide by r in this case. Okay, you can just divide by r. That will get rid of these r's. And it will make this left side just have one r. So a circle whose center is 3, 2, and radius is uh, square root of 13 looks like this in polar form. All right, so again, it's kind of this whole game of turning x squared and r squared, uh, x squared plus y squared into r squares, and x's and y's into r cosine thetas and r sine thetas. So let's do, we can do these next two actually much more quickly than we did that one. So I'm going to kind of break it off here. So here's x x equals 5. So I can replace my x if I want to turn this into polar form with my r cosine theta. So I get r cosine theta is equal to 5. And then I just solve for r by dividing by cosine of theta. And so I get r equals 5 divided by cosine of theta, which you could also write as 5 times secant of theta, because 1 over cosine of secant, but maybe I'll just leave it as this. There. So x equals 5, notice that's a vertical line. In polar form, vertical lines have this type of form. And let's do that last one over there. 2xy plus 5y equals 8. In rectangular form, that's a line. Right, it's just a line. And so what is it what does the equation of a line look like in general in polar form? Well I'm gonna turn that x into an r cosine theta. So this is two r cosine of theta instead of an x. Plus five and rather than a y, I'm gonna plug in five sine theta or r sine theta. equal to 8. And now I just want to solve for r. So the way to do that here I think would be to factor an r out. Right, I have an r in both of these terms. I'm just going to factor it out and I'm left with I'm left with uh, 2 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta equal to 8. And now I'm going to divide both sides by everything except the r. So I'm just going to put the division symbols over here next, uh, next to the 8 because I ran out of room. So this divides out. And I have my equation being r equal to 8 divided by 2 cosine of theta plus 5 sine theta. And there is that line above. There is that line above written in polar form. All right, so this this was, this video is very mechanical, I know. A lot of just uh, substitutions and simplifications, but 
um, at least you get a sense now of the process of converting from rectangular to polar. Remember, these identities are really the substitutions we need to we need to make.